Beloved, God bless you. I pray that everyone is enjoying their weekend, which the weekend is about to start. I pray that I just wanted to these, I don't know who this is for, but I believe it's for not just for a, a select group, but God keeps giving me different things to say to you. And so I want to be able to give it as he gives it to me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so I say that because it keeps just, it's coming to me just, you know, back to back. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And one of the things is to encourage yourself. Many of you, I just got through taping about pressing forward. And so many of you are in that place where you need encouragement to, you know, to be able to encourage yourself. So when you encourage yourself, you are really counseling yourself you're re really urging yourself you're appealing to yourself amen thank you jesus glory be to god and so in the greek word to encourage means parakaleo it means to call alongside it means a greek word in the original biblical manuscripts and it means to counsel it's translated as counsel or to comfort or to console to encourage, to urge, to appeal. Thank you, Jesus, to exhort, okay? All of which describes the aspect of counts, of the counseling process. And so, beloved, sometimes when you are doing great things and you're getting ready to venture into great things and great vision, great callings that are on your life, and you're getting ready to do great business, and you're getting ready to go into negotiations. You're looking for the approval for that loan, for that vision. Oftentimes, you are faced with adversity. And remember when I was telling you about pressing forward. Thank you, Jesus. You have to press forward. Thank you just means to press. That means that you've got to pull full speed ahead. When you're pressing, that means that you're going to deal with opposition. Thank you, Jesus. So when a person is pressing, they're moving into a position where they've got to they've got to exhort physical force and a lot of times it's not just the physical force it's the mental force in your mind you got to be so focused and so steadfast so persistently firm that you cannot allow anyone to get in your head to talk you out of the vision that god has given unto you to talk you out of your purpose and your plan that God has now brought you into this season. My God, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Because this is your season, beloved. This is your time. And so for those of you who feel that, thank you, Jesus. This is not for everybody. It's for those because, and for those of you not to, dip, not to discard you, that's not what I'm doing. But I want you to know because you, those of you who can feel it, there's a remnant of you that can feel this is my season. This is my time. Thank you, Jesus. And for those of you who's tired of Oshaya, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. You are next. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Beloved, this is your time. This is your season. And you got to be careful that you are, that you, you, you cover. And not only that you cover, what I'm trying to say is you got to protect. You got to protect the word that God is speaking in your spirit. You got to protect, thank you, Jesus, his counsel. You got to protect his wisdom that he's import, importing, imparting into you. You got to protect what God is speaking in your ears and you can't share it with everybody. You can't reveal it to everybody. You can't, you can't allow everybody to be in on what God is speaking into your spirit because he's speaking it to you because the vision is for you and the vision is for what he's about to produce inside of you and for your families and for your businesses and for your ministries. And so a lot of times, even though, let me, let me say it in this manner. Thank you, Jesus. Even though he's given it to you, thank you, Jesus. 
It's for the edification of the body of Christ. It's for, thank you, Jesus. It's for communities that he's sending you into. He's blessing you for purpose and a reason to bless other people. But that being the case, they're not going to always understand why you're why God has given you this particular instruction. And so oftentimes when he gives you instruction, it may not make sense to them because really they they weren't given the, the instruction. They weren't given the direction. They weren't given the vision. They weren't giving, thank you, Jesus, the business. They weren't giving, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, God, the ministry that God has given unto you. And so you've got to guard this baby that is getting ready to manifest and this baby that is getting ready to come forth because you are pregnant and you're in delivery. And because you in, you're at the delivery, that means you're feeling the birthing pains and the birthing pains are coming so quickly. You're having contractions. Thank you, Jesus. And so beloved, Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reminded of when David, when, thank you, Jesus, the people talk of stoning David in 1 Samuel 30. And I want to read it. And it says, and it came to pass, thank you, Jesus. He had encouraged himself. Why? Because he was anointed king at the age of 17, but did not sit on the throne till he was 30. And so all that he was going through was building him. All the process of him being on the run from a madman, it was building him to be able to protect others, to nurture others, to care about others. Thank you, Jesus, because he knew that from caring for the sheep for his father, Jesse. And so when he was on the run, God was encouraging him through prayer, through fasting, and through praise and worship. He was building him to know how to deal with people, to build him, to know how to strategize in the warfare, and to know that, and to understand that he had to lean and depend on God. Because when he was in the heat of the battle, and he knew, he felt at times that he would die by the hand of Saul, he had to rely on God in these seasons where it was tough for him, where he felt like, when he felt like surely someday this man is going to kill me. But God let him know to establish him, to let him know that you are not going to die by the hand of Saul. You might think you are. Thank you, Jesus. He came many times close, but beloved, there are sicknesses that are going around. Thank you, Jesus. This sickness is not unto death. And you may think that you're not going to live to see the vision. You're not going to live to see the manifestation of your children getting saved, of your husband getting saved, or your wife getting saved, your family getting saved. Thank you, Jesus, of the vision coming to pass, my God, in your businesses. But, beloved, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. You shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God God has blessed you, beloved. And there's a reason why you're going through these birthing pains. There's a reason why. Because you're right there at the door. You're close to your miracle. And the enemy wants to get in your head to talk you out of pursuing the vision, out of pursuing the dream, out of trying to get the house, out of trying to get the business up and running. He's trying to discourage you to make you think nobody's going to believe in the vision. Nobody's going to believe Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. In what you are producing and bringing forth, nobody's going to be able to um, fund that vision. My God, God is going to fund your vision. Thank you, Jesus, because it's so big until thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Remember Cyrus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, when he funded the vision. Thank you, Jesus, when they wanted to build the temple. God is going to bless you, beloved. He's going to bless you with the right people to help you with what you are trying to accomplish and what you're trying to do, but you got to stay in the ear of God. You got to stay, thank you, Jesus, in the place where you're hearing God, and you got to cover and hide. Thank you, Jesus. You got to protect that which God is ministering unto, that which God is speaking in your spirit. The words that he speaks, they are spirit and they are life. Thank you, Jesus. And when he speaks vision into you, when he's speaking the word into you, when he's speaking instructions unto you and into you and showing you, 
thank you just and giving you that that wisdom and knowledge and understanding how to execute the plan that he's downloading unto you you got to listen and you got to pay attention and you got to do it exactly the way that god is telling you to do it or else it's not going to work thank you just or you're going to be delayed so step by step he's giving you he's giving you instructions so that when he gives you the instruction when you obey him in that one instruction he'll give you another instruction when you obey him in that he'll give you another instruction what is he doing he's building you to know his voice that much more and he's building you to get closer to your promise and to your victory beloved so here it is david and it came to pass in first samuel 30 and it came to pass when david and his men were come to ziklag on the third day that amalek and the amalekites and see amalekites are warlock thank you jesus all they did was make war thank you jesus had invaded the South and Ziklag. There are some people that you encounter, all they want to do is fight and they want to disrupt what you're trying to build. They want to know what your secret is. They want to know what you're doing so that they can stop you and delay you and interfere with your plan. Just like Sam Bal and Tobias, they don't want to join forces with you to help you and to cause you to succeed and cause you to prosper and cause you to grow and be great what it is they're designed to be in your ear to know every step that you're taking and know every move that you're that you're making and taking and stepping so that they can delay you so that they can hinder you so that they can stop the work that you're trying to do they disguise themselves as friends but really they're enemies working from the enemy trying to hinder your progress trying to hinder your growth stop talking beloved and start doing the work thank you just i remember prophet william said thank you just that you have to Thank you, Jesus. You have to build in secret. You have to build in silence. Everybody doesn't need to know what you're doing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Beloved, I believe in you. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I believe that's in Philippians 4, 16. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I want to get that real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to encourage yourself. Thank you, Jesus. And speak to yourself and say, I can do all things. Thank you, Jesus. Through Christ which strengthens me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, God. Thank you. Moshaya 413. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who which strengthens me. Why? Because He's the one that's given me the strength to do it. He's given me His strength. And because I have his strength, strength means power, possessing power. It's past. Thank you, Jesus. It means possessing power. It means possessing ability. It means possessing authority. It comes from the word of being strong. Thank you, Jesus. God is strengthening you for the battle. He's strengthening you for the work. He's strengthening you. Thank you, Jesus, to be able to deal with the attacks of the enemy. He's strengthening you. Why? Because he's the one that's working for you and he's the one working through you and with you. And so you will not fail. You will accomplish great things. You will succeed. You will prosper. You will finish the work that God has put inside of you to do. You will. Thank you, Jesus. Do it. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory, glory, glory. I speak it in the name of Jesus. You will accomplish it. Thank you, Jesus. And you will see the manifestation of it. And you will walk in it. And you will live in it. Thank you, Jesus. It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. So here it is. Thank you, Jesus. There are going to be enemies, so expect it. And don't be surprised. Don't get discouraged. Because when you are moving, thank you, Jesus, and executing the plan that God has given unto you, the enemy's desire is he's not, he doesn't have a problem with you being stagnated. He only has a problem when you begin to start moving in the direction that is leading unto your promise and unto your inheritance that God has promised for your life. And because God has said, this is the set time and this is the time now to do it in, the enemy's trying to, trying to um, fight you. He's trying to stop you. He doesn't have a problem with you having faith Thank you, Jesus. He has a problem with you executing the faith in God that God has spoken over your life and in your life and through the through your life. So no matter what you hear, you keep working, you keep building, you keep trusting God, you keep obeying God. God is fighting for you. And there are times that you have to take, you have to um, 
Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Talking so fast, but you have to take it fast because this kind can come forth by nothing but by what? Prayer and fasting. Take a day and fast. Take a take a week and fast. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you got to do a three day, sometimes a one day, sometimes a 21 day, a 10 day fast. But you got to turn down your plate and get before God and pray while you are fasting. Thank you, Jesus, to loose the bands of wickedness so that whatever the enemy was plotting in secret, he cannot accomplish accomplish it. Why? Because you put that fasting and prayer before God and God is loosening the bands of wickedness. He's coming against the enemy. He's overthrowing the enemy right in his trap and he's not going to allow the enemy to defeat you. So here it is. He says that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And remember, that's where David and his family and his wives were and all the men that were with him. And by that happening, they did it and they had taken captive or, or hostage their women that were therein and they slew not any. All they wanted to do was just create a war. And they and it says here, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David, sometimes your enemy wants to just, just cause havoc and to discourage you and do little petty things. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this was a big thing. But in somebody else's eye, maybe a petty thing, because what the enemy tries to do, he tries to distract you to see if he can get a rise out of you, to see if he can get you to respond. Don't respond. Keep working and building in secret. And here it is. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken. Anytime you take mix with somebody's children or oh, those, that's time to fight. You want to mess with somebody's kids? That's when, thank you, Jesus, when, when you bring out the worst in a person, when you mess with their children, when you mess with their loved ones. And here it is, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. They cried until they had no more power to weep. They cried so much until they had no more power to what? To cry any longer. And David's two wives, now here he's anointed to be king, but he's not king yet. And David's two wives were taken captives. That means hostage, slaves. Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And they was greatly distressed. That means he was in agony. He was in pain. Thank you, Jesus. He was in pain. Why? Not just for himself, but for the people. For the people spake of stoning him. Have you ever gotten to a situation where people got so mad and got so angry until they started blaming you for things that were happening. Here they were following him. And oftentimes when people are following you, beloved, and the call of God is on your life and things look like they're going downhill, but really it's the hand of God allowing the enemy to attack you because he's bringing glory out of you. People follow you because they, they feel like, had I not followed you, I wouldn't be in this mess. But they have no idea following you is not a bad thing. It's a good thing because God is going to take you over and not under. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason why the attack is coming is because God is going to build you greater. He's causing you to be stronger in your prayer life, stronger in the word. He's causing you to see things from a standpoint, spiritual discernment. Your discernment is is becoming stronger. Your, your ability to be able to have insight and understanding is quick. And so what God is doing in you, he's revealing things to you quick. And so the enemy is trying to throw in monkey wrenches to get you distracted so that you're concerned about this over here instead of what's happening as far as your vision, vision and your goal and the glory of God being revealed in your life. Here it is, and they was greatly distressed for the people talk of stoning because of the soul of the people that because the soul of the people was grieved. Now here it is, any leader that is a leader, they will care not only about themselves, but about the people that are connected. He was not only, you know, distressed because the people talk of stoning him, but for the souls of all the people, he was grieved. He was grieving for his own family, but he was grieving for them as much. That's the heart of a leader. When you're hurt for other people, not just yourself. Thank you, Jesus. He he knew that they talk of stoning him, but the reason why they wanted to stone him is because they lost their children and their wives, and they were hurtful about that. Amen. And here they were following him, trying to help him in his journey, trying to hold him up. And here it is, they get caught in a crossfire. But here God blesses him and he recovers all. He asks God, Shall I go? 
pursue this truth. And God tells him, thou shalt pursue them and thou shalt recover all. But before that, he says to them, and all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in his God. Here it is. David takes, he takes, he says to Abiatar the priest, he says, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me the hither the ephod. That means the, the, the vesture around the waist. And Abiatar brought him the ephod to David. And this is what they used to inquire of the Lord for direction. And David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue? Shall I follow after this truth? Shall I overtake him? Because he wanted to get God's guidance and direction. So that when, when you're in a place where people are talking a stone you, when you're in a place of discouragement and attack, you can't panic. My God, you got to seek the face of God and ask God's instruction. What shall I do? Because the first line of defense is to go into a panic mode. But you need God's direction in order to overcome the enemy. Amen. That's what he needed. So never panic. Trust God and seek the face of God, how to handle the situation so that God in all things will get the glory and give you victory. And so here it is. Thank you, Jesus. And David inquired of the Lord. And he says, shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? Thank you, Jesus. That means overthrow them. And he answered and pursued. That means follow after them. For thou shalt surely overtake them. God was letting him know he will surely overtake them. Because he was with them. And without fail, recover all. That means without, without being disappointed and without fail. To fail means to be disappointed, but it also means, thank you, Jesus. Let me get a better understanding of that. In other words, you will, in other words, he's letting him know without fail, you shall recover all. That means that you're going to be a, successful in achieving the goal. That means that you're not going to be unsuccessful, but you're going to be successful in achieving the goal. You're going to recover everything. So, beloved, I say this to you, just like David was in this situation and all that he was facing, encourage yourself. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy. Encourage yourself while you are pursuing your vision, dreams, and goals. And understand, everybody is not going to encourage you. Everybody's not going to praise you. Everybody's not going to compliment you. And if they are, you got to be careful and know, is it sin from God or sin from the enemy? And God will reveal it unto you because you're in that season where He's your spiritual discernment is being enlightened and it's being strengthened and also it's being um, sensitive so that God is protecting you Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Beloved, God is with you. God is with you and God is for you. And encourage yourself in God. Why? Conser and to encourage means what? It means to consult. It means to urge. It means to appeal. It means to counsel yourself. There are times you got to counsel yourself. When, they, when Joshua had it to be the successor, for the children of Israel and cause them to inherit the promised land. God told Joshua, only be thou strong. You know what only means without the companionship of another. Because sometimes people mean well, but they're not going to be able to encourage you in the manner that only God can. And sometimes, thank you, Jesus, they don't understand the vision that God has placed in your heart. They don't understand the instructions that you have to follow to get to the finish line, to the goal where God said that he's taking you. They don't understand your grind. They don't understand why you have to um, be in this meeting. They don't understand why you're pursuing this particular patent for this particular invention. They don't understand why the ideas that you have in your head, that you have to pursue it in the manner that he's telling you. They don't understand why you have to go to this bank. They don't understand why you have to go to this investor. They don't understand, thank you, Jesus, while God why God has put such a, a plan in your head and for you to execute it in the manner in which God is telling you because they were not giving the vision. They were not given that you were beloved. 
So you got to protect that baby that you're carrying, that ministry that you're carrying, that gift that is inside of you. And you got to follow God's instructions. Beloved, encourage yourself. When nobody else is around, when everybody else is speaking evil of you, keep on encouraging yourself and say, I will get through this. And I will, thank you, Lord Jesus, accomplish this by faith because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, have faith in God. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, believe those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he desires. And therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Beloved, you shall see the manifestation of the vision. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing these beloved souls. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing them to accomplish great and mighty things because of your name and because in your name, Jesus, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens them. Now, Heavenly Father, I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, Jesus, that you would help them to encourage themselves in you, Jesus, when the enemy comes in, Lord God, speaking, Lord God, death to their situation, cause them to believe and have such faith, oh God, in you, God, that Lord Jesus, that they speak life to a dead situation. Cause them to believe, Lord God, that the things that they are pursuing and doing, oh God, you have given them, Lord God, permission, God, and they understand that and know that they will not, Lord God, let down their standards. They will not compromise, oh God, for anything, Lord God, for any reason, oh God. They will not be talked out of their miracle, their favor, and their blessings, oh God, but they will be fully persuaded, Lord God, just like Abraham. Abraham stacking and not the promise of God, but being fully persuaded that what you have promised, you're able also to perform it. Lord, bless them to stay in faith. Bless them to be locked into the faith of you, Christ Jesus. And Lord, remove every spirit that is speaking in their ears. Help them to speak faith, Lord God, even in an atmosphere, O oh God, of doubt. Help them to speak strength in an atmosphere, O oh God, where there's weakness and struggle. Help them to speak life where there's death in that atmosphere. Help them to speak the word of God in that atmosphere, for it is your word that it is spirit and it is life, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, for blessing their faith to be steadfast and sure. And I thank you for helping them to be unwavering in their conviction. And in Jesus' name, and I thank you, God. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Love you to life. Sister Carletta B. Bye-bye.